Hey guys, Jeremy here with Simple Life. Welcome back to part number five, where we are gonna finish up these little last stitch neckers. And uh, the only thing we really have left to do is to make sheaths and sharpen them. So for the sheaths, I'm using Kydex. And if you've never used Kydex before, it is a thermal plastic, meaning that you heat it up and it gets very malleable. You can manipulate it, move it, bend it, twist it, whatever you want. And as it cools, it hardens up. Now, this stuff comes in a cornucopia of colors, uh, thicknesses. The stuff that I'm using today, I believe this is 0.063 thousandths of an inch. Uh, you can get stuff that's more like 0.091. I don't know what the exact numbers are, but thicker stuff I use for bigger blades, thinner stuff I use for smaller blades. And these obviously are pretty small little blades. So what I'm gonna do is a sandwich style and there's also a taco style and they both relate to food, so that makes them cool. Now the sandwich style, basically we're just gonna take a square for the bottom, put this in the middle and a square on top, squish it my Kydex press. A Kydex press is a press with some foam. Now the foam that I bought was specific for Kydex, but if you're just getting into this, if you've never used Kydex and you don't necessarily want to invest, you can get like those foam sleeping pads for camping. You can use stuff. When you see this stuff, the way it works, it might give you an idea as to what is kind of required to make this happen. So we're gonna heat these up 300 degrees about is what I go to in my toaster oven I'll use for this. And one thing I found is that when you put this in the oven, you gotta keep an eye on it. You never take your eyes off the Kydex. I've ruined a lot of Kydex because I'll like put it in there. I'm like, oh, let me just do this and I'll get a little distracted. And it's in there a little bit too long and it starts to curl and mushroom and it gets kind of a, a real glossy finish on that. And we want to avoid that at all costs. So the rule that I've given myself to live by is that when the, this goes into the toaster oven, I stay at the toaster oven. I keep looking at it. We're gonna pull it out when it's the consistency of like a wet lasagna noodle. We want it to be really nice and flexible and there is a sweet spot. You experiment a little bit and you will find that sweet spot. But uh, let's go ahead and get this set up. We're gonna cut these and this stuff cuts quite easily. I used to use shears and scissors and stuff like that, but you guys, one of you great viewers said, hey, why don't you just score it like you would drywall and snap it? And ever since then, that's what I've been doing and it has changed my life. So thank you. <laughs> Enough goofing around, let's, let's go get some, uh, some sheaths done. All right, so we've got a piece of Kydex here. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is figure out roughly how big of a piece we wanna start with. Uh, the way we fasten these are with eyelets. Let me grab one of those, and that's these little guys right here. I'll show you that process when we get to that stage of the game. But the way I like to do mine is I'll have two holes for this size of a blade, one there, one there, and then one there, one there. Uh, it gives you a place to run your paracord through, lanyard, however you want to fasten it. I had one gentleman actually lash this to his boot and left it permanently attached. Um, so you just want to make sure you have enough room on either side. And keep in mind, it's going to lose a little bit of this width because it's got to go around the blade. So let's just see, what do we got? I think it should go about three inches. Yeah, three inch square is gonna be perfect for this size. So let's go ahead and mark a bunch of these out. And seeing as there's no kerf, we don't really lose any material because we're not cutting this with a saw blade. So if you're cutting out multiples, you can actually just mark it out exactly where you want it to cut. You don't have to be super, super precise at this point, so long as you make it big enough. You never really wanna like be cheap and make them too small because then you have problems but just kind of get them roughly about the right size. Everything will get cut down from here. Get a good sharp razor. So now that we've got those scored. Slick as a whistle. There all the kydex that we need for 10 sheaths. So I just use a real simple, cheap toaster oven and I'm going to be doing two blades at a time. This stuff does cool fairly quickly, so it is a, a motivated process. We gotta get it out of here, get the knife sandwiched and get it clamped. This is the press. I've got a video about making this. I'll put a link up in the corner. I had one comment actually the other day, a guy saying that gluing this foam onto these boards was a bad idea because they can't change this out. Well, I've had this press for about five years. You can see it's a little, it's getting a little worn out, but it's still working really good. And here, let's get a close up. You see, it's, it's got a nice bit of give. And um, 
Sometimes if it gets real weird lines in it, I'll just lightly go over this with a heat gun. That's another way that you can heat up Kydex to tweak it, to make slight modifications, or even if all you have is a heat gun, you can just sit there and go back and forth and it does heat it up quite quickly that way. Um, so we're gonna be laying one, two, sandwich them and then fold it down and then I clamp it. Now, if you get it at just the right temperature, when these things come together, they almost kind of fuse uh, together. And that is kind of nice because what I'll do is I'll actually leave the blades in here and then I'll drill and mark the holes and that way I don't have to worry about lining the two halves up. So if this goes right the way it's supposed to, the way it usually does, is that we'll have a knife in here. These will kind of get glued together almost. Um, drill them out and then once they're drilled you just kind of pop it up like that. But then you've already got your holes in there so it's going to go back together perfectly. The other thing we need to do almost forgot to do this, but I put two layers of painter's tape on each side of the blade, one, two. That is just so that I have a little bit of clearance. You don't, you don't want too much. I find that three layers of tape is a little jiggly. It kind of jiggles in the sheath. One layer of tape and there's a lot of friction when you're going in and out and it'll wipe off the finish on the blade. That may not be a concern to you, so you might not have to worry about that at all, but Two layers of tape works great for me. And essentially where we get a retention in a Kydex is on some type of a feature. Let me get this camera focused here. So basically right here, the, the Kydex is gonna wrap around here like like that. And that is where our retention is gonna happen. So if this thing's all done properly, it's gonna go, it's gonna click in. And when you go to pull it out, there'll be some resistance, but you will be able to go and pop it out like that. So that's the goal, but let's get these suckers taped up. Oof, it's a lot of knives to tape up. That's the most boring part about Kydex is taping the blade. So a couple months ago, I picked up this. This is a pen of ice. I'll put a link in the description if you're interested. And uh, I started taping up these knives on my bench vise and I thought, you know what? I've got this perfect little uh, swiveling pen of ice and uh, I thought I'd give it a try. It works fantastic for a little detailed stuff like this. All right, so I've turned the oven on. We're gonna put four pieces of Kydex in here. I wanna make sure it's clean. Let that go, get our knives ready that we're going to press. And we're gonna be pressing them on the side here. And then I've got this clamp. So we're just gonna let that warm up. Now I like to wear gloves for this because that Kydex is a little bit toasty. All right, let's see. Ooh, I think we're getting close. Yes, we've got nice pliable Kydex. We are almost there. And that has been a matter of a couple of minutes. A little bit more. Okay, you guys ready? Let's do this. Boom, boom. Knife. Knife. Oh. Hurry up, Jared. Hurry up. Top. Top. And press. Now it's been a while since I've done some Kydex, so I might be mildly out of practice, but we're just gonna let those sit in there for about five minutes and uh, see what we got. All right, let's see how these turned out. Hopefully. Oh, excellent. That's just how I like them. So you can see you got some nice detail there. See how they're kind of stuck together? This is exactly what I want. So I've got to press the rest of these, but the next thing I'll do is I'll kind of draw a curved line where I want the eyelets to be. And then I'll mark them out, drill them. I kind of like to follow the curve of the blade. And you want to be about a quarter inch away from the blade or so. And then I'll make a straight line here and here. So we'll have one, two, three, four. So we'll go ahead and drill these out. And then once they're drilled, I'll separate them, clean up the holes, press them together, and then we'll draw our line where we're gonna cut the Kydex to. And it's pretty much just a matter of doing that. It's quite simple. And uh, yeah, these ones turned out great. Got a nice finish on the Kydex and we've got them stuck together. So the important part of this process too is 
all these knives are fairly similar, but they're not identical, obviously. I mean, they're all made by hand, so the grinds might be, you know, a little different from one to the other. So it's important to keep the sheath with the knife that it was pressed in. So always kind of got to keep that in mind throughout the process, but I'm going to finish up these last eight and, uh, and we'll get to drilling and pressing, pressing some rivets. All right, so what I do is I actually bolt a one, two, three block to my base of my drill press and line it up so that it goes through without touching the sides, but that way I can uh, keep the part I'm drilling through flat and have clearance for this bulge that is the knife inside there, so. Now this one had come apart. Um, it wasn't quite stuck together, so I just used a little spring clamp there uh, to keep everything located. And then I used two eyelets in the first two holes just to make sure this thing lines up nice and even. these countersunk and I took a, an eraser just marked off all the lines so those are all gone and now we're gonna press in the eyelets and these eyelets when you buy them you do need to get the ones that correspond with the size of kydex you're using so these ones are for the 0.063 or whatever it is and this is a really simple process I have a arbor press that I have set up and I bought this from knifekits.com, this little die. It's got a bottom piece. And all you really do is you, you want to make sure you know which side is going to be the preformed side. So you can see these eyelets have one side preformed already. And then we're going to kind of push over, squish over this other side. And I always like the side that I squish over to be on the back. So if this is going to be the front of the sheath, I set most of them up for a right hand carry. Um, you can switch back and forth. It's not a huge deal, but I just like kind of like to make sure I got it set up. Always make sure they're nice and clean inside and then push these all in. And when we do this at this point, we will not be able to get the blade back in until we trim it. So just do like this and then we put it upside down. Kind of locates itself. Whoops and squish it doesn't take a whole lot. This arbor press here is just a really slick way to do it. And now you see this the back, there's the front. So I'll make sure that I put this one with the corresponding knife so that they do not get mixed up. All right, now we are ready to make a basic mark. So I'm gonna kinda just draw rough guidelines where we're gonna cut. Kind of around here. And I just draw these fairly loosely. And then we're also gonna grind in here. But I'll just cut all these out in the bandsaw. And then I'll do my final shaping, each one of them kind of one at a time, sort of custom on the old belt grinder. And I just cut them out on my wood band saw. Works pretty good. It's a really easy material to cut. And then after that, we kind of smooth out those edges. I like to bring the edge of the kydex within about an eighth of an inch from the edge of those eyelets. And then after I've shaped them on the outsides, I'll come in with my small wheel. And here I'll put in the little finger grooves and just finish up the final shaping. I'll use the slack portion of the belt to kind of even out all those round transitions and just kind of make sure everything looks good and it feels good.
And then after I'm done on the belt grinder, there's a lot of this plastic that kind of melts over and sometimes it gets in between the layers. So I just take an exacto knife, kind of cut it away, trim it. And I like to have nice smooth edges. I kind of cut in just a real light 45 so that this doesn't dig into the blade as you put it in and out. Just kind of do some general deburring. That's exactly the fit we're looking for. And then after that, we'll hit it with some sandpaper on the outside. And the final step is I take a little white, little buffing thing on the rotary tool, put some black compound on, and just kind of go over all those edges. So make it a real nice shiny plastic. Kind of makes it have a really good, uh, good finish. And the last thing we need to do is put an edge on these. And for this batch, I'm using the paper wheels. This is on a low speed benchtop grinder. And this is a very, very quick, efficient way to put a really nice sharp edge on. So here I'm just kind of grinding in those secondary bevels and then we'll jump over to the strop. Check it for sharpness with a thin piece of paper. And uh, these guys all got really nice and sharp. And uh, I also rinsed out the sheaths with cold water and then let them air dry overnight just to make sure all the moisture was gone. But overall, I'm really happy with the way these turned out. You can see our kydex there has some nice retention. And the blades turned out pretty good as well. Really happy with how thin I got them ground. And these are just a fun little utilitarian blade and uh, they're kind of fun to have around. If you're interested in these, these will be listed at homesteadknives.com. Uh, they'll probably go fairly quick, so at the time this video comes out, if you're interested, you might want to jump on over. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Cheers.